I have to remember to unmute myself. The other time I actually did the whole entire show, well, actually the first five minutes of the show without unmuting myself. And of course, that's very helpful, right? Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Live Coffee Talk. I'm Michelle Kui. I am a visibility coach and I help women entrepreneurs and coaches to tell a better story so that you can get more clients and get more visibility. Just get out and make it visible. Uh, today, super excited because I actually have one of my clients joining me, and she and I, she and I met each other just not too long ago this year. But she's been doing a lot of amazing stuff, and she's been、uh, booked by multiple podcasts already. And her message is just very, very important, and it's very relatable because. At the end of the day, a lot of what we're doing are building relationship and having relationship. And I remember back in the days when I was struggling with my own relationship, I kept listing my relationship status as complicated. I mean, relationship complicated? Like, is it really that complicated? We're going to find out. Today, I have Jen Chow, who is a certified professional coach for the LGBTQ plus community. As the founder of See How Coaching, Jen helps LGBTQ plus women become better partners so they can create the relationship they desire and deserve. Clients who work with her feels lost in their relationship. That sounds like me a couple of years ago.、Uh, they struggle with self doubt, effective communication, and unclear expectation, which then starts to create tension in the relationship. That also sounds me. And if this is you, also drop me a heart, or maybe a blue heart, or broken heart. If you're still in that process of healing, if your current relationship status is listed as complicated, drop a broken heart inside the chat. All right. She works together with one-on-one -on -one with her client, and her clients get clarity on what they truly desire in a relationship. They get deeper self-awareness and walking through all the mental and emotional blocks to show up in their partnership so that they can have more authenticity and confidence. Jen's education achievement include ICF accredited associate, certified coach, certified energy leadership index master practitioner, certified professional coach, and certified encouragement consultant. Jen was born in Taiwan, grew up in California, and today she lives in Osaka, Japan, with her partner, a dental hygienist turned English instructor. So. Please join me with the warm welcome, Jen Chow, who is going to talk to us and share her insights about how to make better connection and a better relationship. Hi, Jen. Hey, Michelle. Hi. <laughs> It's so great to be here. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you so much for coming. I just. I, I know it, it's so exciting because you're actually in California this week. Yes, <laughs> yes. So this is my kid room when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. How yeah. did you? How did you go from、uh, living and 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 grew up in California, going to Osaka, Japan? I think it was kind of I got to a point that I really needed to get away from where I was living, and I left immediately after I graduated university. And it was kind of an escape for me, actually. In all, in all sense, I think、um, I just needed to get away and kind of find myself.、Um, and so that's how I, I just kind of left after graduating. I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. I was in a very, very weird period of my life. What I think a lot of people were, but、um, I was really. I just knew I was very, very unhappy here. I was. Closeted here, I was not open. I didn't even know what I was. I thought there was a lot of things that were wrong with me, and I just thought, you know, a change of scenery, a change of just lifestyle would give me the opportunity to kind of, I guess, discover myself. So, and was it was it easy to just because you were you were what in your twenties when you left California? Yeah,、was、I think it... I, I turned twenty one there. Yeah, was it easy for you to? Because I imagine you had a lot of you have friends, you have family here, and was it easy for you to just drop everything and just say, you know what, California is really not for me. I'm gonna pack up and I'm gonna go to Japan. 
Oh, that's a great question. I think my dream has always been to live in Japan, actually, since I was a very, very young kid. It was difficult in a sense because I have my family here. I wasn't exactly like a popular kid in, uni-、uh, in, in high school. So, it, friends, it was okay. And the thing was, I actually didn't think I would go there long term. I really just I, I got a contract to teach English in Japan. And so it was only like a year contract and you could renew if you wanted. The plan was only to go for two years. And I promised my mom, I would hold her, like, I'll just be there for two years. I promise I'll come back. It'll be great. And she's like, okay, two years is fine. So, I mean, there was always a plan for me to come back. And then fast forward 13 years, now I'm still back there. So, <laughs> so she's not quite happy about that. But <laughs> yeah. And so I kind of want to go into how you got involved with the LGBTQ plus community. Because I, I think, you know, just from what I heard, and, and I actually know this because you told me.、Um, I kind of I kind of think that you know not everyone、um, step out of their closet until something happened in their life and something that made them realize that you know what、um, this is a new self identity an area where where I want to explore and just being true to myself. So was it in California or did you find out that you you have this your your self identity is you identify yourself as a lesbian? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When, when did that happen? You know, that really happened when I was in Japan. I mean, I always knew there was something a little different about me, you know, going through puberty and like I was crushing on a lot of the girl, like all, a lot of my girlfriends when they were talking about the cute guy and whatever. And I was like, oh, I, I, don't, I don't feel that way. And, and so I, I definitely had kind of a peek into it when I was young in California. But I didn't really, I was so scared of what that meant. And I had a lot of shame and guilt and, and embarrassment about it. So I didn't really think about it. I, I, stayed, I spent all my time kind of trying to avoid anything that was like this, I guess,、um, until I went to Japan when I went to a place where no one knew who I was. And so I started my first、um, same sex relationship in Japan. Um, and I realized, you know, I, I kind of gave myself this opportunity. And I think going to Japan, it was, it was an opportunity to try new things. I mean, going to Japan was trying new things already. So I thought, well, might as well just keep going and try new things. And I realized, oh, okay, this is, I mean, I've dated guys before in the past, and that was, it just never felt right. It felt really awkward for me. And I, it, my relationships, the longest one was like, I like a month. And I just could not like continue it. So it wasn't until I went into Japan, went to Japan and I met someone. And then I fell completely head over heels for a woman. And then I think that was that I've never felt that ever before in my life. And I was like, okay, well, I don't know how much clearer I need to know. <laughs> this is it. And so from there, it was just kind of, I mean, I, I, just, I just had to kind of come out to myself and realize this is who I am. And This feels the most comfortable for me.、Mm-hmm. I think, you know, just to give the listener and the viewer a little background. So, Jen was born in Taiwan. And, you know, I'm also from, I was also born in Taiwan. So, there is that very、uh, close connection. And I,、mm-hmm. I really understand what that, what that culture coming out from an Asian culture where the, the LGBTQ community it has not been widely accepted. In the ages where we we both grew up.、Yeah. And it was not something that we can openly talk about, or you when you hear, there's still a lot of judgment around, oh, what does that mean? Well, whoa, how could you ever say that? Oh, how do you even know? So、mm-hmm. there's a lot of judgment around、um, that self identity that you're, you're stepping into. And I really I, I salute you for that because that actually takes a lot of courage to actually step up and say, you know what, I am who I am. This is how, I go, how I'm going to live my life, whether you like it or not. It's not about you, it's about me.、Mm-hmm. And so、mm-hmm. having, that, having that truth in stepping into your true identity, I'm sure there was a lot of、uh, relationship. Uh, new adventures that you have never been exposed to before. So, going to Japan was one, you know, something that's new. 
um, exploring being an English teacher in a foreign country is another new thing. And now you're finding yourself in this new lifestyle of relationship. What were some of the challenges that you experienced as you know, in the in the LGBTQ plus community? Oh, that's a, another really great question. Thank you so much. I think I kind of came out to myself in Japan, which like you said, is not, you know, being an Asian, in an Asian um, culture, it's not really as accepted, widely accepted as it is in the Western countries. And so in Japan, it is even, I think even more closed, um, than it is even in, than compared to Taiwan, for example, our hometown. So it's very, very hush hush, quiet. Nobody, there's no open homophobia, but it's very unseen. It's like, um, don't say, don't, what is it? The don't say, don't speak, or the, right? So mm -hmm. that experience was kind of strange. Um, and it kind of, in a way, it was so freeing because there were no rules, really. There were no, expectations or whatever and it was all mostly my own self-expectations that was really closing me in a box because I didn't grow up with a lot of resources a lot of um, exposure to people like me or people like us like the Asian community like you said I I didn't know anybody who looked like me who felt the way that I felt and so going into a relationship it was really difficult because I had no idea what a lesbian relationship or same-sex relationship looked like. Mm -hmm. I had some gay friends, but they're guys. And I was like, I I don't, there's definitely differences. I mean, there's physical differences. There's there's definitely emo some aspects of the way that we deal with things that are quite different. So I was under the impression of like, okay, so I guess the only image I had of a relationship was the, you know, the heteronormative relationship. So there has to be, and I, I mean, I think a lot of the people in the LGBT community would be shocked to hear me say, but I had the stereotype of, okay, so I should be like the man in the relationship and my, mm -hmm. my girlfriend has to be like the girl in the relationship. And it just, I mean, it didn't work out. <laughs> it really did not work out that way. And there was a lot of um, trial and error that we had to go through. And now I'm just kind of at a point where I realized, well, we're just gonna try and find what works. And there's no set box. And the same with everybody else is what I've realized is there is no set type of relationship. There's only you and your partner and you guys make what works for you. It doesn't have to be understood by other people. It just needs to be understood by the two of you. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's beautiful. You said, because when we're thinking about relationship, a, a lot of, a lot of people, uh, including myself, there's there we bring into a relationship some expectation, right? The expectation of how our partner should be, how, um, you know, this relationship should play out. And so there's a lot of, um, I guess we will call it the limiting belief or like living in a social construct, like men should be like most of the time, they're the one who's going out and the breadwinner and the woman would be someone who's like staying home and doing all these house chores, right? Right. Mm -hmm. we, we even though people don't talk about it, we don't speak about it. But still, there's that um, limiting belief about how we supposed to be versus how we truly are. Yeah, and exactly. I think another point that you brought up was really interesting for me is that looking at um, the same sex um, relationship, I think what's re really interesting is as a woman, I know a lot of time I get really emotional, right? Mm. And I cry, I laugh, and I, I base a lot of things on the emotional. So when you have same-sex relationship, how do, you, how do you balance out between the two? Like when do you decide or has that show up as a conflict? Yes, yes. I, my partner and I are both really, really emotional and wow i don't think i really have been so em and and i don't think i've ever been so emotionally expressive with anyone else except my partner she kind of she gave me the space to express myself emotionally so she kind of opened pandora's box <laughs> so my previous relationship i had i was dating somebody who was more you know very feminine on the outside but very very masculine on the inside so i felt very you know, I, I was kind of more the girly one and, and more of the, the teary one. My partner didn't really cry or whatever. And we didn't talk about anything. And that wasn't a healthy relationship at all. There was a lot of 
problems there. But the current, my current relationship with my partner, Matt, now, we're both very emotional. And we, before everything, we cried, we screamed, and it was, it was so emotionally fiery, passionate, I guess, in, in like the worst sense, because there was a lot of very, very um, dramatic um, arguments, a lot of slamming doors and get out of the house and things like that. Um, it has been really, really difficult. And I realized, you know, being so emotionally charged mm -hmm. in a sense and not understanding why and how and what triggers it is very, very dangerous. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't be emotional, definitely be emotional, but understanding well, when is this a good emotion to have? When is it appropriate to react this way? That's what I think really changed in my relationship because if I just kept going on and if we just kept going on the way that we were, which was just, you know, the emotion is push the button and they explode and then just yell at each other, that doesn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. But after, you know, after I went through coaching, after I was coached and going through the process is realizing, oh, you know what? Let's keep the finger off the button now. <laughs> Let's try to go through it a little bit calmer and have a little bit more control in the relationship that really, really actually helped. Mm -hmm. I, I love how you, how you describe all these conflict when you have two kind of like two bumpy heads, right? Bumping against each other. Of course, there's going to be a lot of like conflicts and arguments and <laughs> fights you know, that arises. And this is true, whether it's the same sex or the opposite sex or just, you know, um, in relationship in general. And, and I kind of wanted to dial back just a little bit because you brought up the fact that coaching had really helped uh, creating that awareness and it had definitely helped you uh, in the relationship aspect. So I kind of wanted to dial back a little bit. So you're in Japan now and you're teaching uh, English, uh, English teacher, and, and you actually step into your own true identify, uh, identity. Mm -hmm. At what point did you realize that coaching was something that you wanted to go into? What made you uh, make that shift? I think with a lot of coaches, there was a moment in time when this was this was it. This was the only thing that you had left. And that was the feeling that I had. My relationship with my current partner had gotten to such a bad place that, you know, we were literally arguing every day. And we've gotten to a point where we had to get like intervention from our friends because it was getting so bad. Mm -hmm. And there was also so emotionally we were both really exhausted both just having a lot of trouble being like we didn't know we loved each other yes but somehow we were just not connecting it was just everything we taught any conversation we had always led to an argument and we were both having some problems and she was having also she was having problems with that work and the right before the um the pandemic started she had a breakdown like an absolute breakdown, just tears. And she was like, I can't leave the house. I'm so scared to get out of bed. And it just made me realize I'm, I have a part in this situation that she's going through. Mm -hmm. I'm not helping with being absolutely having no idea what I'm doing with my, my emotions, getting angry at her all the time. It's not helping. It's definitely not helping. And so I realized, you know, I can't change her. I have to change myself. I, I want to help her, but it's not help her. It's help me to help her in, in a weird way. And so that really got me to a point where I was looking for anything basically at this point to help me figure out what was my role? What could I do to make it better? I went, I had gone into therapy. They just gave me medicine and I was like, a, a pill is not going to help me fix my relationship. And I had counseling and that helped a little bit, but it was not, it was not getting me to that one point that I knew that I could get to. I, I was missing something. And I was talking to my counselor and I told her, you know, this is good. It's like, I'm getting 30%, but what, what's with the thir the 70%? And she's like, have you ever thought about coaching? And I was like, what's that? <laughs> and she's like, well, okay, check it out. And then I got on and I I found coaching and I, I was so obsessed with it immediately because this felt like, you know, this was it. This was, it was everything I needed. And so that's how I basically started. And, and that's how, you know, the relationship blossomed. 
<laughs> I love it. And and you you definitely when I when I met you, you definitely at the um at the end of that relationship conflict journey, and you were actually going going on a high, uh, in the in the coaching space. So so it was a good place for us to start working together. It was really just like you made it so easy, and and I think you know one of the things that you just talked about is. I, I hear a lot of people talk about, oh, I have a relationship problem or a relationship issue. The first thing that people think about or you you hear, you know, other people advice would be, oh, go see a therapist. Right. Mm -hmm. So so I'm curious, I, I know the answer, but <laughs> I'm curious, what would be the difference between a therapy versus coaching? Well, therapy really, I mean, we, we know the answer as coaches, but yeah, but therapy is really focusing on like the past and traumas. And yes, I had some issues with my, you know, with past and everything and which relates to why I react the way that I react. And, but I went to therapy and they're talking about my past. And right now I'm like, I don't need to know why I'm this way. I kind of, I need to know how I can change what's happening now and the future because I want a future with this person. I don't know how digging up the past with my father's, you know, my father's death and my sh shame is really going to help right now. The problem is now. <laughs> and so that's, I think, the big the big difference in therapy. You know, it, the therapy did help in, in a lot of other aspects and, and dealing with, you know, my, my, my self-acceptance and things like that. But at that point, what I needed was right now, my relationship. And so coaching really does help focus on right now in the present moment. And what, where do you want to go in the future? How are we going to get you there? And I knew I wanted to make a future with this person. I just didn't know how I, I mean, it's like a blurry, you know, you go, you, you look forward and you know, there's a pathway somewhere. It's just foggy. It's really foggy, but you know, there's like a rainbow castle at the end of the road. And you just like, get me there. That's kind of what therapy does, right? They kind of just blow the fog away and here's the path. Let's go. Yeah. Right. So I, I I think I think for for me, the way that I understand a relationship uh, uh therapy and coaching is that there's different questions that's being asked at different stages of our life for different reasons, right? If I'm trying to understand my past, I'm trying to understand or heal all these trauma or tragedy and what you talked about acceptance then perhaps you know in that sense therapy can really be beneficial where i'm trying to understand why am i being this way or trying to understand my own behavior so giving a sense of why things are the way it is and and it kind of really um goes into the therapy portion because a lot of these traumas we have to heal it first before we start thinking about, all right, I'm ready to take some action and here's my how-to. So I think, you know, in a sense, it almost feels like, it almost sounds like coaching gave you more language to know your how-to, how to do the action, how to take your next step, how to do something better. Mm -hmm. And and what you what you talked about earlier is how your relationship is blossom. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how, that is possible and what exactly is a conscious love conscious love so i think when we get into relationships we don't really have an idea of what our ideal relationship is like i mean for me and for a lot of my clients that i work with they just go into the a relationship because they're attracted to the person physically emotionally and they're like yes it's great i see the fireworks i feel the fireworks so let's go. And that's kind of how it started with me in, in, in all of my relationships. It was the, the fireworks, the, the, oh, it's fun to be with you. I want to be with you kind of situation. And the problem is that you go in and then you've got the honeymoon phase. And after, you know, a couple of months, you start to see the person as who they really are. Because, you know, the honeymoon, the, the mask and the honeymoon, the veil kind of comes off after a while. And so I have this concept called the conscious loving which is you know before you get into a relationship or even if you are in a relationship and you've never been aware you have it's okay you can start anytime but going into a relationship and understanding 
what is it that you want from a relationship? Because it's not just fireworks and bam, bam, bam. It's not going it, to, it doesn't last long. And I think that's a big, in my mind, it's a lie that we've been taught ever since we were kids, you know, live happily ever after. It doesn't really work like that in reality, you know? And so go into a relationship or what is it that understanding what it is, being aware of what it is that you want in a relationship is super important because then that will give you at least the, the language to speak about it with your partner and tell them, you know, and, and to, to kind of clarify with each other, this is what I can give. What is it that you can give? This is what I'm able to negotiate. This is what I can, I'm able to negotiate with. This is what this, these are my must haves. Is it okay? Like, are you able to do this? And if not, then what can we do? Can we do anything about it? Right. This will open up a lot of conversation, a lot of very deep conversation, a lot of very important conversations. Right. And if you don't speak about this, if you don't have the language and you don't have the awareness, then you're just going through. And the thing with what happened with me and my partner was I went into the relationship with the honeymoon phase, blah, blah, blah. Didn't know what I was going through. Didn't know what I was what I wanted. I just knew what she was doing was not what I wanted. And that was where I would like nitpick and nag and would nitpick and nag, but we didn't really know what it was that we wanted. So she would always ask me, what do you want? And I'm like, I don't know, but that's not it. <laughs> that would be like a triggering conversation, right? Yeah. But after, you know, coaching, going through coaching and having a lot of, because coaching is, is you, it's a relationship that you build with yourself, understanding and becoming very, very consciously aware of what is it that you want? What are your values? What are your triggers? What are the buttons that people can push? Being aware of that and then learning the, the language and the techniques to actually speak about it with someone else. That kind of opened up the window to, I kind of sat my partner down and was like, you know what, I'm, this is what I'm doing. I'm learning all these things. And here's what I've found out about myself through coaching with um, I, with my coach. This is what I discovered in this session. And you know what? I realized that I kind of need this. And I feel like that's why when you say this, this is how I take it and it triggers me. And I, I, I just need to know, is that what you meant? And like that really opened up a lot of conversations. And that's why I mean, like, that's what I mean by our relationship really blossomed because now she understands what I want what I need, what I misinterpret so we can both clarify each other. And that has helped her as well learn because she's looking at me and the way I speak now and the way that I'm processing things. And she's like a little sponge and she's sucking it all up. And so she's learning as well. So now we're able to have conversations. I mean, it's not perfect. We still do get into small arguments, but we went from like, you know, five hour arguments to like 20 minutes. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's really, really amazing, I think. Yeah. And I also think that, you know, having a relationship means that you have conversation, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can't even have like a, a smooth or decent conversation with each other, then you don't have a relationship. <laughs> and yeah. perhaps that's what makes relationships so complicated, because a lot of time people are at the end of that rainbow and it's not rainbow anymore it's more like dark cloud yeah. and you don't have that re you don't have that conversation and that's usually it prompts people to say oh maybe i ought to look into my relationship and what the problem is and so i love what you just shared and i'm also interested and i do want to uh, kind of wrap up a little bit I, I, I know that you work with clients. Um, so let's say someone who's coming to you and this is like their first time even remotely. They knew something is going on in their relationship. Something is not working out. What are some of the ways that you help them to like understand what's going on in my relationship? So actually right now I'm doing, I'm working on a worksheet which plans out the seven levels of love. So there's something I'm working on right now, and it's really helping people become aware of which level of love that they're at. So really quickly, just as an example, level one relationship, uh, what level one um, level of love is basically like, you know, I just, I'm a victim. Everything you do is wrong and everything I do is wrong and I don't know what to do. So understanding where you are, oh, Understanding where you are in the relationship and choosing which level of really which level of love you want to go through 
is what's really important. That's what I work on with my clients to help them. Wait, so what are the seven levels? So the seven level, the level one is that you're at victim mentality. So you're thinking, you know, everything you do is wrong. Level two, you're quite at a conflict area where you have to defend yourself because whatever they say is, is going to, you have to defend, right? You have to attack them. Number three, level three would be more of like you have, you're, you're just settling, right? You're, you're rationalizing everything and you're like trying to think of, well, I guess, I guess this is why they're doing it. You rationalize. Level four is when you're like, okay, you know what? Everything, I'll do everything for you. It's all good, right? And level five is more like, you know, you're, you're thinking of ways to, to help them benefit each other. Once you move on to level six, then you're thinking of opportunities, any kind of ways to like, um, any kind of way to grow when you're just looking for, you know, growth, basically that's that one. And then seven is just, you know, it's all good. It's all bliss. So that's really quick, like a really quick run through. I'm working on a worksheet right now and I'm eventually going to make it into a workshop. So yeah. Ooh, sounds exciting. And yeah. and so let's say, let's say I'm, I'm someone who's listening right now and I know this is something that could really help me because I have no idea what makes my relationship status so complicated. So how do I get a copy of your worksheets? Oh, definitely go on to my website at www.chowcoaching, C-H-O-W, chowcoaching.com. Or you can find me on Instagram. So Instagram is the same, chow underscore coaching. You can find me there and just drop me an email and I'll send you the, uh, thank you. Yeah, I'll send you the, um, the worksheet. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Did I, did I spell your website right? Yes, but I think there's a www in there. <laughs> I, I think most of the browser. So this oh. is like totally marketing, marketing 101. <laughs> you uh -huh. don't need, ladies and gentlemen, you don't need the www uh, in most of the browser or website address anymore. You can just simply tell people childcoaching.com and that would just take people straight to this childcoaching.com. Very so rarely... Very rarely do I see uh, you need to put in the www anymore. All right, so I learn yeah. everything every time I get on a call with you. <laughs> <laughs> but again, you can find Jen at Jennifer Chow fifty. I have a question about that fifty. <laughs> what does that? I'm sure I'm the fiftieth Jennifer, Jennifer Chow on Facebook, right? <laughs> and then you can also find her on Instagram. And just go follow her. She creates a lot of very, very interesting reel. I think I caught one earlier this morning, and it was uh, something about her her uh, uh, birthplace or where she was, where she grew up. So kind definitely check her out on Instagram. And again, you can find her, uh, send her an email, and grab that worksheet from her so that you can become more aware of your own relationship so that it's not so complicated anymore <laughs> exactly it doesn't need to be complicated you guys it doesn't it really doesn't <laughs> any any last word of advice for our listeners take a deep breath and just take it a step at a time and you are not alone I think that was one of the biggest things that I really wish someone had told me what you're going through the complicated the, com the complexities of everything it's you're not alone there's a way to fix it get in touch with me. <laughs> yeah. And, and I love the fact that you're helping the LGBTQ plus community, because I feel that there's a lot of things that's going on right now in the world against the LGBTQ plus community. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, still a lot of debate that's going on out there, even though we don't cover on this show, but there's people who need people. And, mm -hmm. and I think you are on to a really big mission of helping the community and, and reaching out to me more people so that they don't have to go through this alone. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, it, you aren't alone. You really aren't. So I just hope everybody knows that. Yeah. So again, you can find her on Facebook and Instagram as well as her website, childcoaching.com. And I would see you in the backstage. We have All right. in the backstage and I'll close up through the show. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. See you. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you enjoy watching the show. This is a live coffee talk show that I live stream every Wednesday at nine o'clock, where I bring you a lot of business and mindset stories that will empower you and inspire you to take some inspo actions in your own coaching journey. So if you like the show, be sure to follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. And I would love and appreciate you drop your thoughts inside the comment. Let me know what did you take away from this particular show episode. And I will see you again on the next show. Bye now.